When we added the form from PayPal, you might have noticed that we made the available sizes the same for every shirt. The select and option elements are static HTML, just part of the template. But in a real store, the sizes would vary from shirt to shirt. We might sell out of one size for a shirt, or we might start making shirts for a smaller audience, like babies. Let's modify our products array to contain this information in a third dimension. Open up the products.php include file in your text editor. Remember that elements are separated by commas, so be sure to put a comma here at the end of the previous element. Let's give this new element a key of sizes. But what should the value be? It shouldn't just be a simple piece of text, because there will be multiple sizes available for each shirt. Let's use another array here. We'll use the simple syntax for creating an array we looked at first, with all the elements specified in one command. There probably won't ever be that many sizes for a shirt, so I'll go ahead and leave all these on one line to make the whole products array a little bit easier to read. We have now nested this array three dimensions deep. The first dimension contains a list of shirts. The second dimension contains a list of attributes about a shirt. This new third dimension contains a list of sizes in which that shirt is available. Let's add this same sizes element to the other shirts. Don't forget to copy the comma that will separate the PayPal element from this new sizes element. Mike mentioned to me that the printer made a mistake and failed to print any small or medium shirts for his latest design, the orange shirt. Since that shirt isn't currently available in those two sizes, let's remove these two elements from the third dimension of our product array. Let's switch over to shirt.php and modify the form to use these new sizes from our products array. We'll use a for each command to loop through all the sizes. We only need one select element, but we'll need multiple option elements, one element for each size. That tells us that we need one option element inside the for each loop. Remember that we copied the array of our shirt attributes from the second dimension of our main products array into a working variable called product. The sizes element in the second dimension array of shirt attributes is also an array, so we can loop through it in a for each loop. As we loop through the list of sizes, we want to load them one size after another into a working variable. Let's name it size using the singular form since it will contain one size at a time. We only need one option element for each size in the array, so we'll remove these last two options and end the for each loop. Instead of displaying the static size medium for all the options, we need to echo out the value of the size working variable here, in both the value attribute that gets submitted to the server and in the text that gets displayed in the dropdown to our site visitor. Let's save this file and take a look at it in the browser. Click on this nice teal shirt. You'll see the page is using the third dimension of our products array to display the sizes and all four sizes are available for this shirt. Let's go back and take a look at Mike's latest shirt, the orange shirt. You'll notice here that only two sizes are available for this shirt. It can be a little tricky to keep track of all the dimensions in a 3D array, but it's worth the effort for the power and flexibility they give us in our template files. If all else fails, a good pair of 3D glasses might help. We now have the majority of the functionality in place for our store, but we still have some various tasks to complete before we can call this site finished. 
You should be proud of what we've accomplished so far. I'd say we've earned another cold, refreshing drink of water.